The Gosport Millennium Bridge is a landmark structure forming a key part of the renaissance of Portsmouth Harbour Millennium Scheme. Gosport Borough Council is one of four partners who made a successful funding bid to the Millennium Commission. The scheme is one of 12 landmark projects across the UK selected by the Commission to provide a lasting memorial to celebrate the Millennium. The new pedestrian and cycle bridge replaces a derelict military bridge across Forton Lake at a point which marks a transition from a relatively tranquil setting into the major maritime environment of Portsmouth Harbour. Forton Lake is a navigable waterway and the bridge has to allow boats and yachts to pass. The lake separates land formerly owned by the Ministry of Defence which is now being developed as part of the regeneration of Gosport. The bridge forms the final link in the 3 km Millennium Promenade, which connects Priddy's Hard Heritage Area in the north to the Royal Navy Submarine Museum in the south via Gosport Town Centre. The centrepiece of the Priddy's Hard Heritage Area is Explosion, the museum of naval firepower throughout the centuries, which traces the development of armaments from gunpowder to the Exocet missile. The bridge site posed a number of challenges to the design and construction team. Forton Lake is a site of special scientific interest and is designated a special protection area for migrating birds. The area was heavily bombed during the Second World War, so there was the issue of unexploded ordnance. There were additional complications, such as derelict Ministry of Defence infrastructure and contaminated land. In order to deal with these and other complex issues, the client, Gosport Borough Council, decided to embark on a new way of selecting the designer and constructor for the bridge with the help of the Business Engineering Group at the University of Southampton. The change involved new procedures for identifying and prioritising the client objectives and testing the underlying culture of potential designers and constructors. These procedures were designed to ensure that the client achieved a product that met their real objectives while still operating within the existing standing orders set out by the local government auditors. The Borough Council's officer team and the councillors of the Millennium Subcommittee were forced to make choices between different criteria so that these could be ranked in order of priority, recognising that they could not have everything as top priority. The highest ranking objective was to achieve an opening footbridge of millennial quality. As the project proceeded, clear judgments could be made on alternative courses of action based on the ranking of these criteria. The new route for selecting consultants and contractors tested the company's cultural outlook and ability to work as part of a project team to develop designs and construction methods at an early stage in the project. The unanimous choice of consultant from the presentations and interviews was a company called Maunsell, who presented an integrated team with an architect and specialist consultants. The concept design that Maunsell proposed met the criteria that had been set and was very popular with the Millennium Subcommittee and Council officers. The finished bridge brings to life the early design concepts. Maunsell's design was a predominantly low-level bridge skimming across Forton Lake. The concept was to blend the bridge in with the flat surroundings and avoid unsightly clashing with the surrounding yacht masts and dock cranes. The bridge features slender white concrete viaducts leading to a simple and robust opening mechanism with a nautical theme. Maunsell's aim was to minimise the number of piers and their visual impact at low tide. The resulting design utilised columns connecting directly to the supporting piles. Thermal movement of the viaducts is accommodated without the need for movement joints that are often difficult to maintain. This is achieved by the piles flexing slightly in the soft alluvium lake bed. The 18 metre opening span is counterbalanced with a finely tuned counterweight running on curved tracks. 
the counterweight runs down the guide rails, the, the weight is progressively taken more and more by the guide rails and less of it is used to lift the bridge as the centre of gravity moves towards uh, the hinge points over there. And there's only a small out of balance moment which is taken by two small four kilowatt motors. And so it's quite a unique way of lifting a bridge and uh, a very visual way as you can actually see the weight used to lift the bridge moving down. The appointment of the contractor was a phase tender procedure with two stages of quality and financial submissions. Between the two stages, a unique negotiation or concurrent engineering phase allowed contractors to develop the outline design and construction methods to suit their unique abilities. During the discussion phase, one of the contractors, May Gurney Construction Limited of Norwich, excelled with strong abilities to contribute to the design process and work alongside the existing team. Their tender submissions reflected these abilities and May Gurney were chosen to construct the bridge. The client had a strong desire for the approach viaducts to be constructed from white concrete. In order to achieve this high quality finish, May Gurney worked with a company called Malling Products to develop a white precast concrete shell solution. The precast units were used as permanent formwork in the in-situ reinforced concrete bridge deck. May Gurney are a market leader in piling technology and the use of continuous flight auger piling for the bridge foundations complemented Maunsell's design extremely well. This method of piling also minimised disruption to the environment. The existing derelict bridge was to be demolished but the material from this would not be wasted. A temporary causeway was formed on a geotextile membrane. This protected the environment and meant that the causeway could be removed without trace at the end of the project. The causeway was central to May Gurney's construction method, with the piles, temporary formwork tables and Malling's precast units being installed from the causeway. The lifting section design was also refined by the involvement of May Gurney's specialist steel fabricator Kent Structural and Marine Limited. They worked as part of the team to make the lifting section easier to fabricate and erect. The more modular design could also be installed from the causeway, avoiding the need for an expensive barge mounted crane. detailed design phase, a parapet handrail was designed that includes lighting for the bridge. This removed the need for vertical lighting columns that would have given the bridge a cluttered appearance. The effort put into the project prior to the construction phase was of real benefit. During the construction, few problems were encountered. Those that did occur were handled without conflict and the teamwork and positive culture 
resulted in the swift resolution of technical issues on site. The fostering of the cooperative team working approach on the project has achieved national recognition. The project was nominated as a Movement for Innovation demonstration project and has won a number of awards. The Solent Protection Society awarded the bridge their annual award for the contribution it makes to the regeneration of this part of Gosport. The Institution of Civil Engineers chose the project for its Southern Association Merit Award. The quality of the finished bridge is truly millennial. A survey of Gosport councillors and users of the bridge has revealed that the bridge is a unanimous success with 90% of users rating the appearance and technical achievement as excellent. The bridge meets the prioritised objectives identified by the client at the start of the project. The Business Engineering Group has won a research grant from the Government's Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council to investigate the project delivery process used on the bridge. The aims of the research are to develop and enhance the process for wider adoption throughout the construction industry.